All right, listen up. I did not do such a good job with my video. I feel like I did a monotone situation where it sounds kind of dead. I wrote freaking text. I'm hoping it's funny. I take notes because that is the way how I explain my likes and dislikes of the anime. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. And I'm sorry I am not the uh, funniest, but I am cringy enough to hopefully you guys can accept. I, I don't know where I'm going with this anymore. I am cringy, okay? And if you cringe, I am doing my job, which is good. So, if I don't make you laugh, but I make you cringe, I'm doing such a good job, and I'm happy about that. If I am, like, playing, playing like, this monotone person, I am so sorry. I am, I, I feel so bad right now. <laughs> I even took the time to actually take notes on my anime awards because I am not so good to doing, um, voting just on the spot like that. It's probably one of the reasons why I don't go live because I tend to get super, super nervous and super scared. And I don't know how to do that. So I'm sorry if that's what you were expecting because I'm not, I'm, I'm not that per type of person and I'm sorry. <sighs> I am socially awkward. I am, I don't pick up on social cues. I, I doing the best that I can. And I hope you all enjoy this wonderful video. This is the weirdest intro ever but hey if it made you cringe i am doing my job like i said anyways you all enjoy the video please 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 if you're watching this video grab yourself a snack and a drink i don't want you guys sitting here not having something to drink or eat because this will be a long video anyways Love you, comrades. Thanks for coming in and enjoy the video. Hello, welcome, comrades. As you could see, this is already voted for. Also, because I wanted to check the videos out, I chose like random clips or whatnot. So there might be three to four parts it's mainly just for the music video opening and ending sequence and then we have the best voice performance for the english and japanese so i'll just give you a little bit of what i said in my videos and then if you guys want to see it where i go in depth in it it's not really the greatest but It'll do. So, let's go with the best voice artist performance for English. I chose Johnny Young Bosch. Still can't say that name. Um, actually, hold on. Bosch. I think it's Bosch. I mean, it's Ichiko's voice in English, and I grew up with this series as a kid, so, you know, I'm going to go for that. Now, as for the best artist performance for Japanese, I voted for Mayumi Tanaka for Monkey D. Luffy. And again, I grew up with this series, and I like it way better than the English dub. Um, I also had a hard time because I also liked Atsumi Tanasaki. She does really good for, like, a voice actor for a child. And then there's, uh, Yuki Kaji, who's really good, and Aaron Yeager's. He puts so much passion into, like, Aaron Yeager's voice. It's, like, so amazing. But I chose Mayumi Tanaka because 
Who doesn't love Monkey D. Luffy's voice in Japanese? For the best ending sequence, I chose Akari Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. The sequence was really good. I loved a lot of the transition it did. Also, the with the yin and yang of like the fishes, that was like really cool. Best opening sequence, I chose Chainsaw Man. Probably, now that I think about it, I don't think it's kind of fair because this series did happen in like 2022. I've never seen the series, but I'm, I might someday, but who knows. But I just really like the sequence for this series. They did a lot of camera angles and did like a lot of things that I just didn't expect from it. So it was actually pretty cool. All right. Now let's talk about the best score. Now, just so you are all aware, I will be going through these one by one. So if you guys don't want to do that, trust me, I will make a video that's shorter of just my choices instead of like going into depth of each individually because I just thought it would be kind of nice to go in depth of like what I think about each one individually even the ones that I don't really know about I don't know I just like to go in like more into the information so yeah all right so for Oshinoko I listened to all the soundtracks but I might be going for more of the ones I've watched because I don't know the visuals for like Bochi, The Rock, or Suzume. But I will talk about what I like about the soundtracks. That beautiful song that hurt my soul. I don't want to give out a reason for those who haven't watched the series, but ugh. What a soundtrack, dude. What a soundtrack. Also, the soundtrack with Aqua when it goes intense. Such a good one. Yeah, I I will admit it. I do love a lot of the soundtracks in this series. So, Bochi the Rock. I've never watched it, but I did hear a lot of the soundtracks. And man, the guitars go hard in this soundtrack. I freaking love it. The voice are amazing, but I mean, Japanese songs are always top notch. I really like it. For Demon Slayer... I like the soundtracks, but I feel like there are some from season one and two, but it makes sense since it's not easy to make a specific soundtrack for every single scenario. But yeah, for Attack on Titan, final season, the final chapter for a special one, some are just so good. And there are some that sounds a bit scary to me, but I mean, it is like intense. I'm not fond of it sometimes just because I get scared sometimes as silly as that sounds it's the truth but it works for some of those messed up or scary and I really like the soundtrack in that way chainsaw man okay some were good some were so intense I didn't know what the soundtrack was doing but it also doesn't help that I didn't watch the series so I don't know if I'll fall for this because I was listening to some of the soundtrack I was like this is decent but then there was some I was just like what is happening? What is the soundtrack? And I just don't know if I can fall for it because I just can't visualize some of the soundtracks. I usually visualize what these soundtracks would, like how it would happen and stuff. But like for Chainsaw Man, I'm just like, what the heck is going on? So, yeah, I don't know. Suzume. Ugh. I love the soundtrack. It's so beautiful. There's also some that's somewhat intense, but not really. My vote. My vote goes to Oshinoko. <laughs> I just really like the soundtrack for this series. I like where I can dance to the beat. But Boji the Rock did that as well. It attack on Titan. But 
Ugh. Oshinoko has some good songs, beautiful songs, and r some sad songs. I'm gonna have to go for Oshinoko. Okay, next one. Okay, so for best anime song, I chose Idol. Just because it was kind of obvious. It was a banger song. I am guilty of those 450 view, 415 million views on that YouTube video. Because I did listen to that song through and through. I surprisingly don't know the lyrics. But I know how to hum it. Yeah. That's what I chose. Okay, going to the next one. Must protect at all cost character. Let me just say this. Why? 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 <sighs> I feel like this category is pointless. Whatever, I, I guess. Okay, well, let's see. Anya. She has her parents to protect her. So, yeah, next. Bochi the Rock. And it's Hitori Goto. I mean, probably... From what I've read from her background character, she has social awkwardness and like she has friends to protect her and adding more friends to that circle doesn't hurt. Possibly Hattori? And now I haven't watched this series, but I did hear some music from YouTube from this show and a trailer of this. So, Pochita. I haven't watched the show, but I'm pretty sure he's protected by Denji. I don't know. All I know is he doesn't need protection. Ranking of Kings, Boji. Listen. Listen. Boji is a strong warrior. Okay? Now why would I need to protect him? I know he's deaf and can't speak, but he has Kage for him. So, I don't feel like he needs protection when he's already taken care of. Buddy Daddy is Mary Unasaka. I don't know much about this. Uh, I've seen the trailer and they seem similar to Anya's parents. So I see no reason for me to protect her when she has them protecting her. Mobile Suit Gundam, the witch from Mercury, Sule Suleta? Sule Sulieta? Sulieta or Suleta? Suleta Mercury. Okay. I have no idea who she is. So I had to do a background check on her, obviously. Um, so she seems to lack communication skills, easily trusting others, very apologetic when she feels in the wrong, and she relies on her mother in her greatest challenges. Um, hmm. I think I might go for Hattori Goto from Bochi the Rock. Because like I said, it doesn't hurt for her to have more friends in her circle. But yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't like this category because what exactly are we trying to protect from these characters? Because I feel like they all have, in a way, have protection in their own with like the side characters protecting them. Like, I don't know why they need protection when all of them have like supporting characters protecting them in the first place. But, oh well, I'm voting. Who I think will beat this overall? Possibly Anya. For what reasons? Um, I don't know, maybe because she's cute and she does dumb stuff sometimes. But, yeah. Okay, now we're on the next one. Alright, the next one is Best Supporting Character. Reagan from Mob Psycho 3. 3. Not one, not two, but three. I know he scams people and used Mob quite a lot for his shop, but he really cares for Mob and has helped him on multiple occasions to make sure, well, he's alright. And that Mob doesn't like go in full power as he tends to try to like stop that from happening by fighting his enemies for him. Even if he knows that like he's in danger so he's a good side character not gonna lie oshinoko we have kana arima at first i didn't like her character because she was such a brat 
But I mean, she was a kid, so makes sense. I like her character now because when she was little, she was full of herself. And she then like recognized that. But as she got older, her attitude changed somewhat as she tries to be a bit kinder, but she still has an attitude. So she used to have confidence in herself. But when she like had her acting skills go over her head, people discuss how like difficult it was to work with her. So now she puts herself down, but she's working on gaining that confidence back. And I like that. I think it's because her emotions are like a roller coaster, but she still aims to be like a great actor. And in a way, I feel like it's similar to some of us. Like for me, I love talking about like anime, editing my videos, but at times I could be hard on myself for not being good enough in like what I'm doing. Or there are times I have the confidence in knowing that what I'm doing, that I'm like, I'm working the best that I can and I'm doing okay. I feel like most people's emotion would be in a roller coaster with the goals they're reaching. For Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, we have Satoru Gojo. He defeats his enemies and is not sympathetic towards them. But in a way, it's, it's kind of reasonable as to why he's not. But he could be, you know, playful towards his students and, and friends. But as... Being the supporting character, I don't know. Because starting from season two, I felt like he was a main character rather than than like a supporting character. And and as you continue the series, it focuses on a lot of other characters. So uh yeah, I'm trying really hard not to spoil anything here. Uh yeah. Attack on Titan, final season, the final chapter, special one. Why is this even a title? Hanji, so she's energetic and, you know, doing research on Titans is her passion, which is very helpful because without her doing so, <laughs> well, I'm wondering what they were going to do with these Titans if she didn't even do research on them because I feel like they would have been doomed without her. So yeah, she's a really good side character. Chainsaw Man. Why? Why do we have Chainsaw Man? I I I don't have a. Oh. I don't have a problem with. I don't have a problem with um, Chainsaw Man. I mean, okay. I have a problem that it's in the Anime Awards. When it was like in 2022. I've never watched the series. So I'm not judging that. I'm just. It doesn't make sense. I think it's just weird. <coughs> okay but. As I said. I've never watched the series. So gotta check. Her background of what she is. From what I've got from her character. It said she was childish, greedy, and almost entirely self-motivated. She'll fight people as she seems that she will, like, gain something from it. But if she can't win the match, she will just run away from it because she's not going to get herself killed. Interesting character, but I'm not sure if I will vote for her being the best supporting character. It probably doesn't help that I didn't watch this series, so there's that. Okay, first off, why do we have two characters from the same anime? I just don't think that's fair. But that's what it is. So, I don't know if... I really like his character. But I feel like he's a bit hard to read for what or who he really is until you get into the series. And well, yeah. That's what I gotta say to that. I think who I will vote for will be Kana. Just because I enjoyed her character development. I like the others too. But I just really like her character. Overall, I do feel like Gojo might win. But then again, Shiguru can win this overall vote. But it's just a guess of mine. I don't know who will win. Anyways, I'm going to choose Kana. Vote. Best main character. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> Best main character. 
Let's go through Denji. Background check. He's not your typical shonen character based on what reviews I've seen on Chainsaw Man. He wants to live his simple life and not aim for anything high like all the other shonen characters like to do. So yeah, that's pretty much what I know about his character and oh, he's a Chainsaw Man. Bochi the Rock, Hitori Goto. I obviously know nothing about the series, so background check with her. She's, it seems she wants to join a band. She's socially awkward, and I can't really vote for this because I feel like if I watched the series, I would have a better understanding of their character rather than seeing that what their character's about. Yeah, I try not to go too in depth with shows I haven't watched because I may or may not watch the series, so I don't, I don't try to spoil myself. Mob Psycho, Shigeo Kageyama. Okay. Honestly, his character development for the third season was pretty good. He's trying to figure out what he wants to do and make progress, make progress of defining who he wants to be. And he's in middle school, which I feel like most of us experienced that at one time, where we try to figure out what we want to do before going to high school, but it doesn't help when teachers give you a paper saying, what do you want to do for the future? Because it seems like you're trying to, you're being pressured to figure out what you want to do. I also like that he slowly tries to understand himself throughout the series instead of like immediately because we can relate in a way trying to understand ourselves throughout the years. And like all these other characters, I'm pretty sure like it takes time, but like when we're watching the series, it just goes in at like a fast pace. Yeah, that's what I have to say about Shigeo Kageyama. For Attack on Titan, I am not saying this weird title. I'm just saying Attack on Titan final season. Aaron. Aaron Yeager. Oh, well, hmm. I feel like I really went through all the other characters more than Aaron for the chapter special one. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. One Piece, Luffy. He's a cool character. And I love the action scenes. He's always aiming to be the king of the pirates. And he's been challenging difficult opponents in Wano. And he upgraded his powers. So, yeah, I believe Monkey D. Luffy to be the king of the pirates. Finland Saga Season 2. Dorfin. I, oh, okay. I haven't watched the series. And I know nothing about him. And I don't plan to. As I want to watch the series going in blind. Overall, I think Dorfin could win. But Luffy could also win. So, yeah, it's between those two. Oh, yes. My vote goes to Luffy. And those who are caught up to the series, you know why I chose this. And, and I won't say my reasons for why I chose Luffy because I don't want to be spoiling anything. So, yeah. Monkey D. Luffy. Let's go. Best slice of life. Huh. Haven't watched. I've watched the first one, so haven't watched this. Haven't watched that. Didn't watch this. Who knows what this is about? Well, didn't watch it. Yeah. This um this is bad. <laughs> I have no idea about any of these series. So, since I haven't seen or know anything about it, I'm just going to choose a random one and i'm gonna say do it yourself why i don't know it it just seems more of a slice of life i mean i mean i'm pretty sure all of these do but yeah I'm just i'm just gonna choose this hooray <laughs> okay next one best drama all right oshinoko has family drama Idol drama. Every character having their own drama. Yeah, I can see this being drama. Heavenly Delusion haven't watched. So I don't know much of what I can vote for this. To Your Eternities. Nope. Know nothing about this series. Attack on Titans. The final chapter. I mean, it was an emotional struggles. But I don't think it was 
the only genre that applied in this series. Like, there was so much going on. So, um, I don't know if I'll choose this one. My Happy Marriage. I, I say this was in the category of drama because of the trauma that Mia was facing and having to deal with family conflicts, societal pressures, dramatic elements, and, it, like, etc. So, yeah, I could see that. For Finland Saga Season 2. Like I said, I know nothing about this, and I'm not going to until I watch this series. So, I think, I think, I would choose... I gotta give it to Oshinoko because it had more of a mystery drama series, which I tend to like. So yeah, overall, I think, I don't know, maybe Finland Saga season two would be the fault for the drama. But yeah, I don't know. I'm choosing Oshinoko. <clears throat> Best fantasy. Hmm. Best fantasy. Demon Slayer, I mean, they do have the folklore of demons and they have supernatural elements of like breathing style, which has a vibrant color into attacking the opponents. Mashal, it has magic settings for supernatural elements and magic systems and some quests into becoming a divine visionary. Yeah. Now, I haven't watched the series in particular. I have watched the first season. And it has mythical creatures, and it has, like, the curse, the blessings, and also it has, like, various places to, like, visit. I haven't watched The Ranking of Kings Love the Treasure Chest of Courage, so I wouldn't know. Hell's Paradise. Haven't watched, and I have no idea if this is, like, a fantasy or not. All I know is, is the character is a ninja, or was a ninja. I don't know which one it is. And people has failed in executing him and well yeah i only know this because i've read it from my anime list and from based on the summary Shoku tensai haven't watched it but i do know that this is some sort of isekai and he has magic and travels to travels to places but i don't know the ancient magus bride season two i haven't watched it but from the looks of it from previews i've seen there seems to be mythical creatures and magic is involved so yeah hmm i think i will pick i think i'm going for mishoko tensai i haven't watched the series but based on like reading what it's about on my anime list and looking at the episodes on there it seems like he's been going on a journey and i'm not saying the other ones don't because they all do but this seems interesting so yeah i'll, I'll just pick this boot okay this best, best action huh attack on titan it was amazing but um i think it was because i had one episode of this because this is talking about the chapter special one and not special two and i think um watch actions i kind of want more and because i had like this just this one out for this year and i have to wait like another few months for the other episode kind of made me wish they just try to finish it all together and just put it out when they were ready to put it out i don't know that's just my opinion so chainsaw man i've seen a few fight scenes on youtube but I don't know if it's better than the other series in here, so could be wrong. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. It was good. And I got a lot of actions from the series. You have MAPPA doing a fantastic job. They really need to give them a raise for their passion and effort they put into this series. The choreography was just so freaking good. Bleach. Though I may have watched the original... Bleach series. I haven't watched the Thousand Year Blood, and I don't want to know about it since I am still trying to finish the original one because I haven't finished it all the way through. Demon Slayer. It was okay. I had a problem with Michiro just because he was mostly like in the water shield. Uh, yeah. 
However, I'm always going to love the fire and on the sword and the sound effects because it's so freaking beautiful. Love it. One Piece. Oh, the Wano arc had some good action and Luffy and his gears is just amazing. Of course, that was some good action right there. <laughs> the winner is obviously Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. And overall, I think Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 will win it overall. Yeah. Best comedy. Okay, so when it comes to comedy, I can't say much about the series. I haven't watched. Even if I check the summary. Because it only works when you watch the series and just laugh at the scenes or the reference or whatever it is you're laughing at. So since I didn't watch Pochi the Rock, I won't make a comment on that. Mashal, I freaking love this series. And I laughed so much from these episodes. You have the Harry Potter reference to the mob psycho here. Being similar to Asta from Black Clover and One Punch Man Saito. And he's similar to Popeye. So yeah, this series got to me and I've said my part in the recap video I made for Mashal. And if you're interested in watching my video up about that, you should only watch it if you already watched the first season of Mashal. Yudo wait, wait, wait. Yudo say Yatsuda. Am I saying that right? Yudo say Yatsuda? You just say, wait. I, I'm probably saying that wrong. Mm, yeah, I didn't watch Buddy Daddies. Didn't watch Spy Family Season 1, Core 2. Who made this? This is also in 2022. Wait, is this on? No, wait. They're bad at this. Whatever. Um. Okay, for this... Okay, for Spy Family, for the comedy, it's alright. But it didn't make me laugh as much as the first part. I think it's because you know the Forager family, and now the gags don't get to you as much. Yeah, that's my opinion on, on that. Some 100, Bucket List of the Dead. Okay, so Akira, the main character, is funny as he tends to be unfazed by the zombie outbreak and also happy not to go to work. And being able to finish his, like, bucket list. I feel like we all have some sort of bucket list we want to finish, we want to aim for before we die, but we struggle with financial problems or like whether we have the time or not to do it. And I think this is funny and enjoyable because he has no financial problems as he has everything for free and he has all the time in the world now because zombies are everywhere. Hmm. It's either Mashal or Sama 100. I gotta go with Mashal. It just got to me more. I think it was... I think it also helps when you watch, like, One Punch Man, Black Clover, Mob Psycho, you, and like, Harry Potter. Like, if you watch all of those, it just makes your day. So, yeah. I'm picking Mashal. Next one. Best Romance. Romance, 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 romance. Best romance. Okay, so Orimiya, based on some comments I've seen on my anime list, getting rid of the spoilers, um, they did mention that it seems to be like an extra side stories. So, yeah, I, I don't feel like I missed out on anything. <laughs> And I have watched the first season, and I thought it was fine. My Happy Marriage. I, okay, I kind of like the series, and I understand. I'm just going to kind of rant about this, okay? I understand Mio was traumatized by her past, and she still got stuck up on it. That was fine, but it kind of threw me off on, like, for so many reasons that I just... Oh, I might discuss it in my videos as to why that is, but who knows when that will ever come out. I'm just trying to give my opinion without trying to spoil everything. Uh, however, overall, as for the best romance, I would probably put this more in the drama category than in the romance, which, you know, 
I obviously did not choose that as for my vote. Skip and Loafer. Skip and Loafer. I should get a award for not watching a whole lot of these series in 2024. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch it. So, yeah, I didn't watch this. Okay, so from my anime list, it says like Mitsumi is aiming to pursue her dream of bringing positive changes to Japan. She goes to like a pre cheese, a pre just pre press. prestigious high school and she meets a student named Sosuke who helped her on her first day of school and she apparently leaves an unfavorable first impression in front of her classmate. Oh, okay. So basically she wants to be positive but because she met this guy named Sosuke, now the students don't want to get a, like along with her because they're either jealous of her or because they're just keeping their distance away from him because like He's not someone, he's not the best influence or something. I don't know. Insomniacs after school. So, I read this also on my anime list. And it talks about, like, a high schooler, Ganta Nakami, that has trouble, like, falling asleep most nights. She's a free spirit who's well-liked by her friends. But apparently, no one knows that she has a sleep disorder. So she used the astronomy club as her sleeping place. And I guess it's a guy and a girl needing some shut eye. And it looks cute. But other than that, I don't know what this is about. So, all right. So, yeah, I didn't watch this too. But it does say Akane's boyfriend breaks up with her for another woman. She's depressed, so she starts to play the game to get back at her ex at the event for the game. But she runs into someone named Akane. Kito, who's a gaming legend that happens to be her guildmate. I watched the trailer and it seems cute and it seems like it stays in the romance category. I don't know. Tomo John is a girl. Freaking love this series. I think I like how it's the typical I like this guy or this girl, but like, how in the world do you make it obvious for them to notice you? And the best way into doing that is by doing all these crazy things that somehow makes it impossible for them to notice, hey, I like you. It's just an enjoyable series overall. So, yeah. My vote. I love the series. Everything about it was great. Who do I think will win over all um, my love story with Yamada-kun? I don't know, maybe. I mean, it is made by Madhouse. Madhouse has some pretty good, pretty good animes out there. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay. Best art direction. Ushi no Ku. But before we do, let me just say, I don't know what the art direction really do. So I had to look it up and they seem to be responsible for like the visual style of the animation. Like, they decide how the characters, props, and environments are going to look and provide a basis for the rest of their art department to work from. So, I, yeah. This is based on what I looked up. I could be wrong, but pretty sure that is what they're to do. The art director for Oshinoko was Tetsuya Usami. And given the mood for the series of Oshinoko, it would usually be, like, cold dark or warm colors and I think it was really cool like for me it blended well into the series for the characters they had to like work with like Aqua, Ruby, Kana, I, all these other characters so yeah it was cool. Demon Slayer. So the director of um the art direction is Koji Ito and animation director is Akira Matsushima. <sighs> Okay, I have problems. I love the animation of like some of the backgrounds. I'm sorry. I, I'm still, okay. Let me just say, I have a problem with that CGI fish, okay? I do not know why that was a thing or why it was there. That fish cast guard into my memory. And I do not understand why they had to do it that way. Because it was just 
awful. I still have a problem with that. But besides that, the background was good. The character design was good. Everything was good. Except for that CGI of the fish. Yeah, I I don't know what else to say. I, I have that in my brain. So I can't I can't pull for <laughs> Demon Slayer. I I'm traumatized by that CGI. I'm sorry. Anyways, <clears throat> I will say that the studio Ufotable always does wonders with their art style, so I have no complaint. Two seconds later. I, I, I still have problems with the freaking fish, okay? Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Junichi, I think that's how you say his name. Junichi Higashi for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. It was amazing! The backgrounds were very detailed and reflecting the shadows in some areas in the background, which is really cool. So yeah, I have no problem with that series. That was some good art direction right there. Chainsaw Man. Art direction is Yusuke Takeda. I haven't watched it, but based on some clips I watched, it seemed pretty good. But then there are some CGI moments, so I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Um, Hell's Paradise. E. Caesar. Um, yeah, I don't know who this is, but he's the art direction and I haven't seen the series. But the animation seems fine based on images I've seen of it. I can't really say much when I haven't watched the series. So, on to Sama 100 Bucket List of the Dead. Art direction is Takedo Gampei. Gampai. Gampei? Gampai? Gampei? Takedo Kampei, and the colors are really done in this series that I did not expect to happen. Like, the paint from the zombies are just really, it's really interesting. Like, it just brings out the color in Sama 100, and I really like that for some reason. So, I have no complaint. Alright, it's time to choose the winner. The winner of it all is Demon Slayer. Nani? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's Sama 100. Obviously. I just love the paint. It was so different to me. I'm not a huge fan of zombies. It's just not in my category. Um, like, I know there's series like The Walking Dead, some other zombie movies that are out there. I just didn't really get into it for some reason. I don't know. Um, you don't have to like my vote. It's fine because you can always vote for what you like better. I just like to give my reason why I like to vote for this one. And I feel like overall, the winner could possibly be Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Just because I think, uh, it's, I feel like a lot of people have watched this series. I do feel like people have watched Sama 100, but then like the three episodes came like later. I think it was like on Christmas when the last three episodes came out and which is why like I don't know if people would vote for this. So I think like overall, like I think the winner overall might not be this and be Jujutsu Kaisen. But I ain't choosing Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm choosing Sama 100 for my vote. So... Ha <laughs> ha Best cinematography. Cinematography. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, Attack on Titan. Cinematography. Attack on Titan final season. Dude, this is a masterpiece, okay? I know I said this title is weird, and I did say it did make us wait when they should have just let them both out when they were ready. But hey, at the end of the day, I should appreciate this masterpiece because I freaking love everything from the soundtrack, even though I know I said, like, it could be scary to me, but like, my goodness, everything was just so good about it. The focus, the camera angle, the details for the characters, as well as the background, and etc. It was, it was beautiful, okay? Just, just know that. Just know it was just a beautiful moment. I love every moment of Attack on Titan, okay? Demon Slayer. Hmm. I'm sorry, but that fish CGI is just gonna bother me forever. That's just scarred in my memory, man. 
That's all I think about when I think about Demon Slayer's like Swordsmith Village Arc. Like that's all I think about, okay? There's nothing I could do about that. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. <clears throat> I love the action. I like the fisheye focus. Those are kind of weird to do. Usually you don't use that a lot, but you have to use it just right for like those moments. And I really liked it. Um, anyways, but I'll be honest. I, uh, I, I didn't pay attention to the soundtrack as much. Because I was just so focused on the action and sound effects. And I, I, I was just like, oh shoot, I forgot to listen to the soundtrack. As it was, you can't do that to me. <laughs> you can't do that to me. I'll be so like into it. And then I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot to listen to the soundtrack for it. But like after I finished like the season two of Jujutsu Kaisen, I just went back to listen to like the soundtrack. And it was good. I, I did watch the episodes again to like listen to the soundtrack and it, it was really good. It was just, I was just so focused on the action and the sound effects for like the fights. I was like, oh yeah. Chainsaw Man. Can't say much what I haven't watched. So I don't think I'm voting for this. Heavenly Delusion. This is making me sad because I'm not doing so well in voting when I haven't watched the series. Now, why are there so many anime out there? Why? It's fine. It's okay. I'll do better next time for next year's anime award. I hope they go for ones that are like, you know, not obvious. I never have a problem with shonen anime, but I do feel like they don't give like other animes a chance. Other anime like category a chance because like they're always focused on the shonen. I feel like they should focus on other theme like um isekai or the freaking what other ones are there? Sojo. I mean, I guess their romance does help that. I don't know. I know there's a lot out there and I'm, I I think I'm not very helpful when I, I do watch a lot of shonen. But it's also because the only reason I watch shonen is because everyone just wants to spoil everything about shonen. So I feel like, yeah, in a way, I feel like you kind of, you kind of have to if you don't want to be spoiled. Yeah, I, I didn't watch Chainsaw Man, Heavenly Delusion, or Finland Saga. So my folk. Is going to Attack on Titan, the final chapter. And I think this can win overall, but I'm not sure. Because it, it probably could go to Jujutsu Kaisen, but I don't know. I'm choosing Attack on Titan. Best Director. Ooh. Okay. Best Director for Oshinoko is Daisuke Hiramaki. I don't know how they direct this, okay? Especially since I don't really read manga or light novels yeah i really don't i think like i i can say all the mangas i have read and it's not very much i've read spy family one piece detective conan what was the other ones made sama dungeki daisy yeah those are the only mangas i can remember oh yeah fruits basket yeah that was it oh yeah my hero academia okay that was it for sure yeah um yeah, but those are like the only ones that I've read. So I really haven't read any manga. All right, so I think so sometimes they might or not at all cut out scenes that were in the manga or like novels. I don't know because like I said, like I haven't read a whole lot of series to know that. But I did read these directors do for anime because I don't really know what they do. But like, Based on what I read, it seems they, like, oversee the drawings and correct, like, key animation drawings and, like, layouts. So, I don't know what they correct, okay? But I do know they approve the animation drawings and layouts because, you know, like, the anime's out. Because they approved it. So, I read an interview on how, like, Daisuke got into it and he hadn't read it until Kobayashi 
who is the producer of Hoshinoko, introduced him to the manga, and he enjoyed it, and became the director for it, and he decided on the 90 minute on the first episode because he thought it would be, like, tough to cut those into three parts, and decided the one episode would be the idea for, like, the one volume of Oshinoko. I enjoyed the first episode, and I couldn't see this being broken into three parts because I just felt like it just all connected into that one episode. But yeah, that was a really good choice right there. Bochi the Rock. Director is Keichiro Saito. Never seen this series, but I know a bit of info about this director based on a blog I read. So he has never read the manga, and Kiro Rika, the character, the creator designer for Bochi the Rock was the one who suggested his name and the one he'd like to work with. Yume Hara, the animation producer, reached out to him with the offer and he like read the manga. And what drew his attention was how sharp its jokes were overall. He also liked that like the characters aren't overly reliant on each other in their relationship. And he goes on about other reason he likes but based on this he really enjoyed the series and hopefully i'll watch it someday yeah jujutsu kaisen season two director is shota gosho sono he has directed animated and done some of the storyboarding for jujutsu kaisen that's kind of of an intense project that he's doing they said he first began after graduating high school which is crazy wait 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 okay so Go Shosono's career in animation, which eventually led to his di- directorial role in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, first began after graduating high school. He joined XEBEC Sue, whatever that is, an animation studio which has since become a hub for talented animators and directors. The likes of Rohei Takashida, Shin Awaka Bayashi, Kyo, Kiyotaka Oshiyama and Kisuke Kobayashi all started their career at XEBEC. Which is crazy. Yeah, that that's that's what it was. But um yeah. He read the first chapter before volume one had even been released, and he had no idea where the story would end up going. But he was already excited about the world view. So yeah. Heavenly Delusion. Okay. The director was Hirotaka Mori. I didn't watch this, but I guess he struggled with overall pictures since the writing stage. But once he made up his mind, the rest quickly fell into place into like making this anime. And I don't know if it was like good or bad or whatever it was. So that's that's my take on that. Chainsaw Man. The director was Ryu Nakayama. I kind of suck for not watching these series, but the director for this show has faced criticism from fans for his, like, incompetence, um, the lack of respects for the original work, controversial tweets, so, like, there was problems. And this, like, anime, I guess, like, they said, like, it led to, like, low sales and dissatisfaction among viewers, which is surprising because I thought like a lot of people have watches. I don't know why it's saying low sales because I was like, I, w- I thought that was like, that was like doing good. But yeah, I guess that's what was happy- happening. So I was like, gosh dang, okay. Um, so I guess due to that happening to him, uh, apparently he's not the director for like season two. I think, because he says his farewells to MAPPA, so I don't know if he will do, like, Chainsaw Man Season 2 in a new studio that was founded, like, in 2023, which is called, like, Andraft. Yeah, I I don't know how studios, like, I don't know how, like, it works out. Like, if you're a director for, like, a specific anime, I don't know if, like, you could take that with you or if it stays with that studio or whatnot. I don't know. But yeah, that's what happened. Then you have Attack on Titan, final chapter, Yu- Yui Chido Hayashi. <laughs> so there was an article and it says like he would go into this project and say like, fight, fight. But really, 
We all know that's not what he says because, like, that's the English term, okay? But in the Japanese term, we all know it's Tadakai. So he says Tadakai. every time he goes into this project for Attack on Titan. And he says they put all their passion into this final footage of the Attack on Titan. So, yeah. Ooh. Oh my goodness, this is hard because they all did so wonderfully. But the one I'm going to choose, I gotta choose Attack on Titan. I think personally, the ending following up the finale of the episode was done so well and he did such a wonderful job in checking like the project before it was made into an anime. And I love Jujutsu Kaisen, Oshinoko, and maybe the others. I don't know, because I didn't watch it, so. But I'm sure it was good. At least, I'm pretty sure. But I feel like overall Jujutsu Kaisen can win. But then I just feel like Attack on Titan could win too. But I'm choosing Attack on Titan. Yura Chido Hayashi. I, I think it helps that I saw that he goes into his project saying, Tadakai. Yeah. My focus to you, Chido Hayashi. Ooh, we're almost done. Best character design. Ooh, actually. Okay, this is going to be a little bit different because I do have some opinions on it. I saved in my files, okay? I knew this day was going to come and I needed... So we're going to go for... We're going to check them all, okay? This is Akita Matsushima's character design. I really like the details on Tanjiro. Like, I like the hair, you know, like, just the details for the hair to make it stand out. And you also have, like, all these nice, like, Details here where it's like you could see his shirt reflecting from the flames, reflecting like some light onto his shirt, and then like there's also some shadows around it, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, I like that. Looks cool. And you have Oshinoko from Kana Hirayama. And like, Let's see. I really like the star eyes. What captures my attention for like anime characters is the hair and the uh, eyes. I don't really look at like the face. I mean, sometimes I do if it's like really weirdly proportioned. Also, I also like when they don't exaggerate the breasts because <laughs> I think sometimes I'm just like, oh, why is this a thing? It is not even humanly possible. But then again, it's anime, so you can make it as exaggerated as you need it to be. But yeah, I really like the eye. And it like blends well with the hair color. So I really like that. I especially like like they try to do like these highlights for eyes like hair. It works so well. And, like, um, if you watch the series, like, her expression in her eyes, like, changes so much. It's, like, so cool. Okay, next one we have is Denji. This is a picture. I, I just got images from Google. But, I don't know. I, I, the eyes are okay. It's, like, your typical um drawing i guess i'm not a good artist but like simple hair no highlights no like you only get like the shadows inside here so like because it's like you know tucked in there but not really anything fancy to like go with this so it's okay it's okay oh and this is from a. Uh, Kazutaka Sugiyama, who did the character design. I'm not saying it's bad. So, okay, this is from Koji Hisaki. Koji Hisaki, it looks fine. The eyes are fine. 
The hair looks fine. Yeah, it, it, it's fine. Okay, so this, from what I've heard, oh, and this is from Koji Tajima. And um, from what I've heard, this is actually CGI'd. And it, it looks cool, in my opinion, because I don't know, like, I feel like some CGI's do so well, and then some CGI's don't. Like, I like the eyes. I like this character design. I do like how it... How they do, like, these reflection. The freaking, like, shadow hair. That's cool. Yeah, it looks fine. I like it. This is from Sayaka Ko Koiso. Koiso. I think I'm saying that right. Her design. I like her design. Maybe it's just because the f color vibrant, like, really helps. I like how, like, it's bright here, and then it's a little, like, dark here, and then, like, they have, like, the shadow, obviously. I like it. Like, they really went trying to, like, work hard into blending, like, three different colors in here for her hair. She looks cool. Well, four, I guess, if you count, like, these white highlights. Looks cool. And then obviously, like, I don't see a lot of this, but like, I really like that you could see like her lips and it looks fine. Because I feel like they just do the line and that's it for the characters usually. At least I think so. Yeah, see? Like, these are just simple. 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 That's why she's a beauty. Because she actually has lips. Um... Yeah, I like the eyes too, but like obviously you can't see the eyes a whole lot. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Tadashi, Tadashi Hiramatsu. I really like the details, like the dirt on the clothes, and then obviously the blood and this. I like the shadow as like he's looking down because like also the hair is simple, but it's it's fine. Like, I think it's, it's good. Um, I like it. It's cool. Okay. But yeah, that's, 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 who will I choose? Hmm. I have to go with Oshinoko. I thought it was just so colorful and so unique and so different. So yeah, I'm choosing Oshinoko. So the winner goes to Kana, Kana Hirayama. Okay. That is who I vote for. Best animation. Okay. Attack on Titan final season. Come on. What is this? This isn't even fair because you have like three from Mappa. See, like right here, here, and here. And all the other studios have like one. Ugh. It doesn't even give the other studios a chance. Well, I guess it is what it is. Okay, first, Attack on Titans, the visuals are amazing. Especially how they are so detailed on the Titan forum. And I really like how they timed the, char the character's expression in the series. The background was amazing and the attacks were spot on. And I don't know about you. But for some reason, I just like really like like the uh, rumbling, um, because like the smoke, the rocks, and the clouds are very very detailed. Ufotable does wonders in their animation, and I will always, always love the visuals of the elements they put out there for the action. But as for when they zoom out of side characters, I could always tell that it's CGI. But the one that got to me the most, which you all know, is the fish. Yeah, that's never going to go away. I think that is the one thing that will bother me. I'm pretty sure that it has bothered quite a few people. Because it has bothered me quite a lot. And I don't like that. Anyways, everything else was fine. But yeah, I was really bothered by that fish. Oh, and... I did forget, uh, the multiple eye creature also bothered me. All right, Mob Psycho 103. 
Oh my goodness, this is really good animation, especially for the series. Okay, usually this kind of animation would be bad for some other anime, but it works so darn well for Mob Psycho. And I can't understand for the life of me why that is. Well, I do now, thanks to this video called Mob Psycho's Animation is Good. Shout out to Forgotten Relics. You should give it a watch. Yeah, I just love the dynamics of the animators changing the camera angles and transition and so much more into the series. And this isn't just for just Mob Psycho season three. This is like also for like season one, season two, and then also season three. All right, so Chainsaw Man. I can't say much about this since I've only seen clips of the series. The animation looks good and I have seen some CGI, so yeah, I don't know what to say about this animation. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. What am I supposed to say to this other than it's freaking amazing? I felt like MAPPA just put their heart and soul into this, but then again, they always do with all their anime. They did like some heavy smears and then really went deep in the camera angles, did the fisheye effect when it's done right, obviously. Um, but it was done well in Jujutsu Kaisen. It also highlights the details on the fill-in, the characters, and I could go on forever. The fighting scenes also stood out to me. Okay, Trigun Stampede. I've heard it has a lot of CGI for this series. Some people like this art style for this series and some don't. I like CGI when it's done right. And it doesn't seem like it's been done very quickly or lazily. And seeing a few of the AMVs for this series, it doesn't seem that bad. Probably shouldn't have been watching a lot of AMVs for it because, like, I might want to watch it, but I might know it based on <laughs> what I watch. But who knows? Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem that bad. And these characters look alive to me as they, like, they move normally and their expression are shown on their face. So it looks good, but I've never watched the series. Ooh, who am I gonna vote for? Is it gonna be this or that or any of? I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, D, uh, e malfunctioning right here, right now. Malfunctioning. Uh, I, uh, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I'm going to go for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Or should I go here? Or should I go here? Ugh! Who do I choose? I'm going Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Overall, I think... I think overall... Demon Slayer could win. I'm really hoping that's not the case. Because if they choose Demon Slayer, I am going to wonder how they approve this because of that fish. That fish has ruined it all for me. That fish will forever be scarred in my memory. Well, we felt. Okay. Best original anime. I didn't watch any of these, but I did see a trailer and I'll bring it out um sometime next week or so uh, i ain't choosing this and i didn't choose any of these other than that it just had this similar vibe of spy family so i chose buddy daddies because like all of these are just different to me i've never watched gundam never seen a golf series and I also i don't enjoy golf as much so there's that the do it yourself uh it, it was like a slice of life and i don't feel like i would have watched this more than i would have watched this this seemed interesting but like i didn't really understand like the plot of it so i guess that's why i didn't vote for this so that's why i went for buddy daddies had a similar vibe of spy family and because i watched Spy family i was just like well okay buddy daddies it is and I can understand now that trailers do not help. It doesn't justify what these shows are about because it, it just doesn't. 
unless you watch the series, then you understand if it's good or not. Next, wait, whoa, did I fall? Oh yeah, I did fall. Okay, okay. Best film. All right, Black Clover, Sword of the Wizard King. Animation was so good, and it was actually pretty good. I was a bit nervous where this could go since the series tends to go up and down, but it wasn't bad, and I won't say it was the best. I was into the main villain, and for all the other ones, they were, eh, they were okay. The other villains were okay. I think it would have been better if it was like a, I think it would have been better if it was a series or like a special, because trying to like, trying to cut all the villains fighting the other characters was kind of like jumping all over the place. And I understand that it had to be like that because it was a movie. But having too many villains for just one movie, for these characters to be here, I felt like it was just a bit too much. And you can't really go into like these characters. I, I didn't feel anything for these characters other than the main one. So I don't know. Um, if, I'm not going to say that the, this, this film, I don't know if I want to say it's the best film. Because I don't think so. Kageyama Sama, Love is War, the first kiss that never ends. Uh, <laughs> Love is War, great romance, great story, great comedy. And as for a movie, well, love the title. And it was still funny, but I don't know. Nothing's wrong with it. It was good. I'm pretty sure uh, I remember laughing at some scenes and being happy with some moments. So I have nothing bad to say about this. But will I vote for this being the best film? Um, not sure. I'm not sure. Choose a main. It's a good movie. But as for the best film, I don't know if it does. I don't know. I mean, it seems repetitive for some films like Weathering With You, Your Name, and etc. I'm not saying it's similar to the plot because the plot is different. But more like the supernatural events, the cross-time lovers. So more like the story element. And I love it because it's done right, in my opinion. And I really like the soundtrack, the animation, and it's an interesting story that I don't want to spoil. But like, I guess I've tried to say is like, I do like Your Name and Weathering With You better than Susume. And nothing is wrong with Susume. Um... I mean, it could be the best film from th the choices I have, but like right now, I just, I am not sure. But, but let me just get through the other ones. Okay, so I saw the trailer for Blue Giant. And this looks really interesting. Like it is seeing, like just reading what it's about and seeing the trailer. And I know I say trailer doesn't really do justice for the anime, but my goodness, I feel like this would be definitely be in my category to watch for sure and i haven't watched this but like he goes with his friend to watch like a live jazz performance and inspire him to practice the tenor saxophone and like he has no ability to reach sheet music and it sounds like he's been through a lot of obstacles in being like the best saxophone player the visual and the music sound was like amazing to me when i saw the trailer i was like hmm that actually i was like Wow, that actually sounds really good. The plot is interesting. Um, I, th I I think I like it a lot just because it is based on like music. And I love music. Like I really love music. I, I'm not like it. I'm more into like the anime music though. So, but I do like like um other songs too. It's just anime music is just so good especially the soundtracks like just listening to them like i like slow ones i like fast one i like upbeat ones i like a lot of them but the fact like he doesn't understand music like i don't understand music i sing i suck at it and like he's doing his saxophone and like people are booing him but he's still trying to do what he loves so i kind of feel like it was like a familiar vibe to me and i was like dang i like that Psychopaths, Providence. I did not watch the series. I saw the trailer and I was just confused. And I watched the trailer for like the original like series. I was so confused. Honestly, I have no idea what the series is about. I read the summary. I saw the trailer. 
I'm still confused as to what the heck is going on. And it probably helps. I think it might help if I watch the series, but I don't know. I was just like, what is going on? So, yeah, that's... I am not the smartest. I, um, yeah. Let's just leave it at that. The first slam dunk. I haven't watched it or read it, but I know about it. Well, okay. Actually, take that back. I watched, like, two episodes because I remember the main guy had, like, a temper and hated basketball, but he tried to impre impress a girl saying he loves basketball or something. And then, like, he tried playing the sport, but he has, like, no idea about the rules to basketball other than shooting the ball in the hoop. I think that's what I remember from what it was about. I could be wrong, but the point I'm getting across is that I feel like this series could be the best film for people to have watched this series because it was, like, nostalgic. But, yeah, I don't know. My vote goes to Blue Giant. Nani? My vote goes to Blue Giant. I know it seems crazy since I've never watched it, but the soundtrack, the instrument, and the plot just interest me right off the bat. And I will definitely plan on watching it, and the reason I don't choose Love is War is because it's not like a masterpiece. But it's worth watching, and Susume is good too. And I love the story element, but like, when it's a bit of repetitive, then I don't know if you could say it's the best, because it's like not unique or different, or like, it's not like different, you know? Blue Giant, though, is pretty interesting because he wants to learn music, but also like there's obstacles along the way into him achieving this goal. And the fact that this isn't a show, but a movie, that's pretty cool. And I'm not sure if he will succeed into becoming the best saxophone player, or he will need to keep on learning to achieve that goal, or he will give it up or not, he will give it up or not, and maybe there might be another movie. I don't know. I don't really know. But I hope to watch this and give my thoughts about this later. Now, for the overall that I think will be the winner, could probably be Slam Dunk. I think it's because of the nostalgic moment when people have watched or read the series. Um, it could also could have like been an outstanding job in making this film about the characters and achieving their goal into winning the basketball tournament. But I'm just taking a guess here. I haven't watched this, but I did see the trailer and it doesn't look bad. Vote for Blue Giant. Best new series, best new series, huh? Okay, Oshinoko. The first episode was really good and continuing this episode didn't disinterest me. But as for the best new series, I'm not sure. Chainsaw Man. Well, I can't say much about that. Hell's Paradise. Alright, based on what I heard, some people were saying it was poorly animated, so I checked some clips on only because I do want to watch this, maybe. I didn't see all the clips, but my goodness, the animation looks fine to me. I don't know what they're complaining about, honestly. Um... This is based on my anime list and I see reviews. It's probably a bad site to like see the reviews, but like I'm not trying to go all over the place to search it up to see if it's good or not because at the end of the day, I might just be watching it or not. So the summary about the Hell's Paradise talks about like Gabi Maru, who is an assassin and that he believes and to die, but things happen along the way and his execution has failed. So yeah um this is just based on what i read from my anime list the series seems to have a slow pace and it's kind of like divided with people but i won't ju judge it since i have no idea huh okay maybe i might judge it for like not voting for it but that's because i i didn't watch it so bochi they're up can't say much heavenly delusion visuals look good and the summary says disaster struck human civilization for some reason. Have I watched it? Uh, yeah, no. It does seem interesting to watch though, so, um, yeah. Slam 100. Akira securing his dream seems to be good until he realized, like, sleepless nights and brutal work are, like, his new reality. But that all changed thanks to the zombie apocalypse attack, you know? 
and I have indeed watched this. <laughs> Okay, I love the visuals and definitely the transition. I don't usually point out the transition in anime because it usually is not that different or unique. But when I saw it in the series, I freaking fell for it. I think the opening is upbeat and getting into the episodes after the opening ends. Um, I think the opening is upbeat and getting into the episode and getting into the episodes after the opening ends. And it kind of just makes my day for some reason. I don't know. I'm going to be honest, but I think I might vote for this. And the vote will be going to Sama 100. I think it's because I think I just enjoyed it quite a lot, especially with the comedy, transition, the editing, the soundtrack, and etc. I'm not usually fond of like zombie shows, as I've mentioned before. But for some reason, this really inquired my intention. And the reason I can't say like Oshinoko is because it wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is the best new series yet. It was more like, you understand what goes behind the scenes of the entertainment world. And it's interesting. But I won't say it's the best because there are some moments that made me so upset or depressed in some situation. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day... I'm just like, wow, that really sucks. Whereas Sama 100 did the same thing, but I think what made it best for me is that it was depressing and upsetting at the same time, but it also tried to remind me how I should be enjoying life. So yeah, my pick is Sama 100. And I think overall, the vote will go to Chainsaw Man. Probably because the main guy isn't trying to achieve something so high, like all the other shonen characters, and wants to live a simple life. Also, it helps with some fan service in action. I don't really know. I'm just guessing since I haven't really watched this show. So, yeah. Best Continuing Series. Best Continuing Series. Attack on Titans Special One. I'll be honest. I love the series, but I'm not fond of how they titled this because it's so darn confusing. I'm sorry. I am just... This title is just so annoying to me. Plus, I think they are talking about the special one and not the special two that ended the series based on the title. I wish they didn't end special one and make us wait for a few months like I've mentioned. So, yeah, I I, I just think it just kind of killed me. I kind of wish they just finished it together and just put it out when they needed to put it out. And I need to clarify that I love this series, but the way they try to stretch this for so long, I kind of wish they would put it together did not care how long it took. It could have taken five years or so. I don't care. I'm willing to wait for Attack on Titan, especially if it's Attack on Titan. I just don't like how it was stretched. So maybe I'm just overthinking this, but at the end of the day, I do think it was the best continuing series following up to Special 2. So yeah, sorry about my rant. <laughs> okay, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. I freaking love it! Season 1 was mid to me because I have watched so many shonen series. But season 2 made me realize season 1 was a good story plot. Following up to season 2. And season 1 isn't so mid to me anymore. And obviously season 2 isn't anywhere near to being mid. So yeah, I believe this is also the best continuing series. I think it's just crazy how I thought season 1 was mid. But then like seeing season 2 I was like, dang. That's... Actually, you know, season one's not that mid like I thought it was. It was actually pretty good. Spy Family Season 1 Core 2. Alright, the first part of the season got me hooked to the series. But the second part, not so much. So here's my thought process. In the first part of the series, we got to know about the Forger family, which made them, like, really interesting. And we also, like, got some expression that are like priceless and worth being a meme. However, the second part we are introduced to are like some side characters we hardly seen. We hardly see. Like Bon was like in three episodes, got to know about his backstory and that's cool. But then like Fiona or Nightfall, we got to know how much she loves Lloyd, but like that's pretty much her character. And we didn't get much about Lloyd or Yor's action because that's what made them interesting in the first place. And Anya was probably the only one that was, like, more focused in the series. 
But then again, I think like she's the main character. But I just thought the Forger family were going to be the main characters. And I think I, I, I enjoy Anya's story more than like Lloyd and yours because like, I don't know, it was just, it was just okay. Like something just happened and I was just like, eh. Um, but it wasn't bad. I, I was just expecting more things from it. But you know, I'm not the writer for this series. I will take what I have. Demon Slayer, Swordsman, Village Art. That fish, man. That fish is just... That fish is gonna haunt me. Uh, okay, when I think back on Entertainment District arc, I like that better than Swordsman's arc. I think it's because I wasn't fond of... Uh, actually, I'm just gonna keep that thoughts on my future recap videos. I'm not sure when I'll make it, but it'll be in my videos in the future. But yeah, all you're getting for... From me, that's spoiling, is that darn CGI fish. That CGI fish has scarred me. One Piece. I can't choose this. And no, it's not because I'm not caught up, because I am. It's just that Wano just ended in December and Egghead started in January, so I don't know what they're trying to say at Best Continuing Series. I mean, this series has gone for so long, but, like, I know it says best continuing series, but, like, obviously, like, special, like, Attack on Titan, special one, goes to special two. Jujutsu Kaisen, season two, goes to, like, season three, like, season one from season two or whatnot. But, like, One Piece, it was, like, in the Wano arc, and it didn't get into Egghead until, like, January. So, like, it's just kind of weird to me. Because, like, this series has been going on for, like, 20 years plus. So, I don't know if that's, like, kind of fair to choose this. Just because it has been going on forever. Unlike these, like, five of these category. So, yeah, I don't know. Then let's talk about season two. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't watched it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't watched it, so... The winner for this overall is Attack on Titan. Yes, I know, I did complain, but I never said anything about disliking this series, okay? Never. I love it, okay? It was really good. It is. It is. Not was. Is really good. I think overall, as to what will win for the votes, will probably be Attack on Titan, okay? Juju. Ju Jujutsu Kaisen season two is good, but they did say October and so forth is not eligible. So that means they're considering the 10 episodes that were out for season two and whatnot. Yeah, those. So it's just like those 10 episodes, I think. I don't know. They're kind of weird in their continuing series. I just wish they would just go for all the ones that were out in that year. Uh, but yeah, that's why I'm going for Attack on Titan. Let's go. They did good. They did good. All right, we're on our last one. Anime of the Year, Ushinoko. This series gets dark because it goes behind what happens in the industry. And... Some of this is based on real life events, like not, uh, yeah. Where? Who? Who knows? <laughs> I don't know who it's based on or, that's why I said events. Sure, it may not have a lot of action, but it does get more into what happens in the entertainment business, such as like, the anime adaptation, the comments that can be good or bad, the people who look up to idols, and some may be overly obsessed with these idols who have their own lives that isn't known to the world or other things, you know? Which is why the song Idol is really good at grasping what this show is all about. Our style is unique when it comes to I and our children, as well as the other characters who have their own unique style. I and the other characters here are unforgettable, 
based on their backstory of who they are and what they want to achieve, and in a way can be similar to others in the real world. Uh, I'm pretty sure I said this so many times, but I haven't watched this, so yeah, we're skipping this. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. This series was a lot better than Season 1 in many, many ways. It was great. It was better than Season 1. Um, I'm very glad to watch this and surprisingly didn't get spoiled by it. But that's only because I would remove anything related to Jujutsu Kaisen on social media because I'm not letting anyone spoil the fun out of me when I watch this series. The animation is really good. And I remember re-watching some scenes because it was that good. It really showed the passion for the action for this series. I'm not saying other shows don't do that because I know they do. But the fact they captured my attention for the animation, they've done well because it was beautiful and I freaking love it. This could also be another good anime of the year without spoiling too much as to why that is. But I'll say the fighting scene, the sound effects, and the animation was so great that the studio Mappa needs a raise. I'm serious. Bochi the Rock. Huh. Well, didn't watch that. Demon Slayer. I have some complaints. But animation is always beautiful because of you, Fotable. I got to learn a bit of the backstory of Tokito and Mitsuri, but the story didn't really like compel me as much as the other two season of Demon Slayer, so I don't know if this was like really the anime of the air. Finland Saga. Janet Watch. <laughs> okay. I will finalize this too. Oshinoko. I think it has my vote as for what I think will win. It's one of those hit or miss type of series where you will continue the series or drop it. Not because it's bad, but because I think some people aren't, aren't like interested in this series. That involves around the entertainment world. So, yeah. And that is it. That is it, comrades. We have finished it all. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Thank you so much for watching this Anime Awards. And it's crazy that you guys even watch all this because... I'm hoping you guys got a snack and a drink while watching this whole freaking time. I was just going through ranting about stuff and discussing these anime awards because this was just long. But I do appreciate you all for taking the time to watch this and hope to do more videos in the future. That involves anime, of course, but yeah. Anyways, love you all. Have a wonderful, beautiful, and an amazing day. I'm not kidding. Love you, comrades. Bye!